God, source, universe was my sugar daddy. My only job was just to get out of the way and receive. Frequency is everything. And so what frequency do I want to bring to my business? That's the freaking key. The ladder of believability as a way to stair step your way into these bigger manifestations, that changed my life. Wait a second, that might be my mom's dream. That might be my dad's mm -hmm. dream. That might be someone else's dream, but it isn't my dream. Right. And then my next step was, well, who do I need to become? It's easy to say like, oh, money sounds good. Why don't yeah. I try to manifest that? It's not the money that you're after. It's the feeling that you think money mm -hmm. will get you. At that event, I heard my intuition just scream at me for the very first time. Now's your chance. Well, Catherine, welcome to Powerhouse Women. Thank you. This so excited to be here. Such a long time coming. And what I love is that even like our text exchange back and forth was like, whatever day it happens is going to be the day and we don't know why. And it's going to be the perfect aligned conversation. It seems like it's been happening a lot with mm -hmm. me lately where I'm like, I'm, I was supposed to talk to you nine months ago. And it's like, yeah, yeah I feel like I've been on your show five times yes. already because of all the rescheduling. But there's something about divine timing. There is. Yeah. yeah. So for anyone who's not familiar with you, your story, how do you describe the work that you do? I actually hate when people say, like, what do this, you do? Yeah. Because there's so there's actually not a box that you could put it in. Really but isn't. No. So I would call myself like a manifestation mentor, manifestation coach, manifestation teacher. I do all the things, obviously, in the realm of spirituality and manifestation. And I got into this realm when I was 16 years old. My friend handed me a book and she said, Catherine, this is how my grandpa has everything that he wants in life. And he doesn't work for money. Money works for him. And at 16 years old, of course, you're like, um, I don't want to work for money. I Great. want money to work for me. Great. Sign me I up. I have no idea what this means. And I come home and I read this book cover to cover. And it was like something just activated within me where everything in my life made sense. Mm -hmm. Like everything in my life just made sense. I feel like I've been here before. I've read this book before. And I just became like this closet obsessed junkie when it came to all things self-development, personal development, like all these successful people that I would follow from that point would just say like the key to success is your mindset. And hearing that made me go, OK, then I want to learn everything there is about mindset. Yes. And so I got into my current company, Manifestation Babe, started it when I was 23 years old. And that's what I do today. Which if you go back to like 16, that's pretty early. So early. To really latch on to that topic yeah. as yeah. like the thing that you want to learn more about and the thing that you like really are passionate about. Because I don't think it happened for me until later, like college years. Mm -hmm. And when I think back to even just what we were talking about with like our human design profile and like the things that actually light me up, it's always come back to that like personal growth and like that spark where you're, you feel like you're remembering something, you're yes. not learning it for the first time. Yeah. I'm pretty convinced it's like an yeah. old soul thing. Yeah. When I meet other old souls. Yeah. It's, it's so many people who've gotten into this stuff like at an early age. And that's not to say like there's anything wrong for you to get into mm -hmm. it much later in life. And I often have people who are like, oh, Catherine, I wish, yeah. I wish I came across this when I was 16 like you. And now I'm 40 or 50 or 60. Yeah. And I just, just like this podcast, everything happens in divine mm -hmm. timing. Like you mm -hmm. were supposed to learn whatever it is. There were certain sacred soul contracts that you signed up for before you incarnated that if you learned how powerful you truly are earlier in life, you may have not learned the necessary lessons that you're meant to learn. And at some point you come into this place of like, oh, I see I have like a conscious creation role in yeah. my life and I can create it to be whatever it is that I want. And there's just a reason why certain things happen the way that they happen. I went through a lot as like a child. And I think that my motivation behind my obsession, you know, with personal development was really like going through a really tough childhood and feeling so out of control and feeling so depressed and feeling suicidal right. and feeling just all of this mix of emotions and getting bullied and, you know, having a really strict mom at home and I think that it was just destined to find me to be like, Catherine, you can overcome all of this. There's mm -hmm. a reason why you signed up for all of this, but it doesn't have to be the rest of your life. And right. this is like part two of your life mm -hmm. where you get to embark on the next chapter and see what you 
create out of it. And that's mm-hmm. not to say I mastered everything at 16 years old. Like, let's right. be clear. It wasn't until I started, got the download and the idea to create Manifestation Babe that then I actually went all in with it. And I was like, okay, wait a, wait a second. Because before... I would experiment with like good, getting good grades in school. Cause think about like what a 16 year old has access to really. Like what you care about. Yes. Like your view of the world. Exactly. It's, limited. it's mm-hmm. so limited. And the only thing my mom ever grilled me on is like, you better get good grades yeah. so you can go to medical school so you can become successful. Mm-hmm. That was the constant programming I heard my entire life. So of course I'm like, huh. I'm getting C's and D's in school. So if manifestation is actually real, then I should be getting A's and B's. And I don't know what prompted me to think that it was that easy, but I swear to God, there was this one test that I took the same Friday. So Friday morning, I took this test. It was in anatomy and physiology. So that evening I read the secret and I knew that I didn't do so well on this test because you know how, like, if you leave an answer blank, like you're not going to get points for it. Right. So there's no way that I could get anything beyond like a B on this test. There's just no way. And I remember creating this, you know, I, I was, I was following the steps and a big thing that spoke to me was visualization. And I've always been a very visual person. Mm-hmm very deep into my own imagination. I think as like a survival mechanism as a kid, I had to create my own world and really just, you know, I, uh, one of the most common comments that I would get on my report card as a kid is like, Catherine's a great student. She's really quiet. She's pretty shy. And also she daydreams a lot. So can you ask her to pay more attention in class? Like I was just such a great daydreamer. And so I'm like, wait a second, I know how to do that. So I visualized my teacher because it was a small enough school and my teacher was kind of kooky and she loved to call the parents directly when you get like a good grade and yes. on a test. Oh, how cute. And she's like, you know, I don't know what she says, but I just <laughs> imagine in her voice, like my yeah. mom picking up the phone and she's like saying, Catherine, gotta, I was like, mm, let's pick 90. Okay. 90 is good. 90 is fine. My mom will be happy with me. And then I, um, I was living in the downstairs area of my house. So like my parents' bedroom was upstairs. I was downstairs. And so I heard, I was like, okay, I'm going to hear footsteps going down the stairs, yeah. someone going down the hallway. And that's literally exactly what happened an hour after I read this book. So it was like the universe ne- knew that I needed immediate evidence Yes, because it was going to be a part of my path some way or another. And then from there, I fell into a crazy obsession with travel that I still have to this day. Like travel is my, sharing about that. It's my number one passion. Yeah. And so when I went to college, I was obviously a broke college student, but I was like, (laughs) I know how to manifest. I'm going to manifest really good deals. I didn't think about manifesting more money for whatever reason. And I was working at like a movie theater and I was like, I'm going to manifest really good deals for travel. So not like I didn't want to do backpacking travel. Like Mm -hmm. I didn't want to stay in hostels. I wanted to stay in luxurious five-star hotels. Thank you. So, That's more my style. Yeah. So I would literally, <laughs> I remember like looking at plane tickets with my ex-boyfriend, we did it together. I would literally tell the universe, like, I want it for this much money. And it was so crazy. Like we would walk into, what do you call them? Travel agencies because we would be like, okay, we're getting these great deals. Let's see if we can get better deals. So we'd go into a travel agency and I'd be like, I'm finding these flights for $300 round trip. Can you do better than that? And they're looking at me like, hmm, no, you're not. And I'm like, yes, I am. And they're like, no, because our deal would get it for $500 round trip. There's no way you're getting it for 300. We're not even seeing those numbers. And I would literally go online and show them the price. And they're like, well, it doesn't make sense to work with us because you're clearly finding better deals. (laughs) You're a better travel agent than we are. (laughs) Yes. And then I learned, I'm like, okay, this is really cool. Like I can manifest this stuff. And then it was through like a series of events, some rock bottom journeys um, and moments where I was like, you know what? I want to learn how to apply this to like business, to money, to things that I really care about that are going to make a huge difference in my life. And so that's what I did Mm -hmm. when Manifestation Babe was really like a documentation of my own, like proving to myself that this shit works, right? Proving it to myself because at the time I was living on my grandma's couch, I said no to medical school. I moved to Los Angeles, had no money. I kind of realized that I didn't really have this passion for passion for this business that I started, this online business that I started Mm -hmm. in college. So I let that go was in the fitness space. And I was like, I think I'm going to go all in with this. Yeah. And yeah. And that is actually one of my favorite parts of your story because, and I want to I want to go nitty gritty on this because what you did 
in that year and mm-hmm. you talk about like that being the year you the decided one to go year experiment. all in yeah you yeah. call it the one year experiment yeah. on like proving to yourself that this works which yes. also then created this story for you to powerfully start your business from yes but before we do that here's the other like nuance that I heard in what you shared there, which I think I'm obsessed with manifestation. I'm obsessed with understanding like the nuances of it. It's why I love your work so much because you teach it in such a beautifully nuanced way. When you talked about as as a 16 year old, all I could see was getting better grades. Then I had this passion for travel. How much is it important that what we're actually manifesting is energetically what is actually in alignment with what we want most versus it's easy to say like, oh, money sounds good. Why don't I try to manifest that? Yeah, this is such an important question Mm -hmm. and such an important distinction. I think being authentic with your desires is key. It's, it's, It's everything. And the best example that I can give you, even from that time when I was a student. So like I said, my mom really programmed me to go to medical school. And so when I started my fitness business in junior year of college, I was also still in the mindset that I would only create this business because it would help me pay for medical school because oh, wow. the thought of taking yes. $300,000 out in loans and like starting, like I just knew as a kid, like one day I'm going to grow up and be rich. Like that's just what I decided. And I'm like, okay, what are my paths to rich here? And so I'm like, well, doctors make a lot of money. Okay. Which ones do that? Oh, dermatologists and plastic surgeons. Perfect. I'll become one of those. Right. So that's like always been my line of thinking, but it was always like in the realm in this box of like, but you mm-hmm. still have to go to medical school because so much, you know, as kids were programmed to need the approval of mm-hmm. our parents because mm-hmm. our parents are essentially God, like they feed us, they clothe us, they're tied to our survival. Yeah. So, so often we don't realize like, wait a second, that might be my mom's dream. That might be my dad's mm-hmm. dream. That might be someone else's dream, but it isn't my dream. Right. And so around that time, I remember being so frustrated because I was, it's almost like I was, I was like a split personality trying to accomplish two things at once. And what I realized is that when I kept lying to myself that I wanted to go to medical school and like was determined to get really good grades at this university that was just killing all the science students because it was so popular for getting into medical school. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of competition. And so they would like slaughter the first, they would slaughter you for like the first three years. And then it would get a little bit easier because once they weeded everyone out, it's like, all right, now we can have fun here. And so I was working my ass off. And I remember at some point, like all of a sudden, it's like the universe was sending me signs. This is not meant for you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening was, on test days, of course, of all days, on test days, there would be insane traffic and I would miss the test. No. Or the bus, like I would ride a bus from, if anyone's familiar with where this is, I lived in Gig Harbor, Washington. I would get on the bus in Tacoma, Washington and drive past Seattle to get to my school, University of Washington. And I would get on the bus and the bus would just not come some days. And it would always be on some test day or some lab day, some critical day where I'm like, what is going on here? And I find that for many people, when they're lying to themselves about what they want, it's like they're going against the flow and the universe is trying to tell them like, hey, you can have everything that you want, but why not create the life that is actually authentic to you? Mm -hmm. And so it'll send you these signs and these nudges and put unnecessary obstacles on your path to be like, hey, really check in with yourself because sometimes Mm -hmm. the obstacles will come, you know, even on the paths to what you actually want. And it's still like a check-in of like, okay, how bad do you actually want it? I was going to ask like the distinction between the The, challenges that are diverting you versus having you prove how how bad you want it. I think that's why Mm -hmm. I like to call them check-ins is Mm -hmm. because you can really check in with yourself of like, okay, am I getting stuck in the how here? Do I still really want the end result? What is the end result? And just like you said, I just want money is not good enough Mm -hmm. because first of all, there's so many different ways to make money. And second of all, it's not the money that you're after. It's the feeling that you think money Mm -hmm. will get you. Mm -hmm. It's like the freedom that you think that money will get you. Like the reason why I pursue money manifestation is so that I have total financial freedom to spend as much time as I want with my family and travel wherever I want. And and choose when I want to work and when mm-hmm. I don't want to work and not come to my work from a place of scarcity and that mm-hmm. I have to and that mm-hmm. I have to be here and I have to podcast like that's never the kind yeah. of energy 
that I ever wanted to approach Manifestation Babe with. And I mm -hmm. think the reason why I ended up getting a nine to five job when I started Manifestation Babe, when I was transitioning from one business to another, the reason why I went out and got just a $15 an hour receptionist job, something like sort of brain dead where I, yeah. I'm not too disconnected. Yes. Like I'm not too into it and too stressed out to where yeah. I can't focus on building my business. Like I was building Manifestation Babe, you know, at my lunch breaks in the mornings and the evenings. And the reason why I decided to get that job is because I didn't want to come from any sort of stress when yep. I approached Manifestation Babe. Yeah. I really wanted to deliver like, you know, if I was going to teach about abundance, I better be feeling abundant, abundant inside. Yep. Right. Yep. I better be feeling yeah. good as I'm helping people feel good. And so that was part of this master plan of like frequency is everything. And so what frequency do I want to bring to my business? Because yeah. The action in which you do something determines the frequency of the outcome. So if you're approaching something from this place of like, I have to, I need to, scarcity, 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 even if you make it work, you're going to attract more reasons to yeah. feel even more, I have to energy, I need to energy, scarcity, scarcity, scarcity. And that's what I love so much about your content is there are just these little check-in moments to be like, that's why I feel like I've been bumping up against myself. That's why it's been harder than it needs to be as I'm really calling in this next thing. So let's actually take people back to that year where you were set out to prove. And actually, I can already hear the public saying like, wait, you, she didn't say what book she read. It was The Secret, right? That was that, the book. It was The Gateway Drug, The yes, Secret. I feel yes. like that's all of our So many more books I read, of course, but the first one, I feel like for so many first people, it's like The Gateway. Introduction. Yeah. It's so much, so palatable, but I Very think it basic, sends a lot of yeah. us on this rabbit hole of like, I want to dig more. Okay, so yes. that was Don't At Me. Okay, that's the book, everybody. <laughs> take us now to this year where you set out to prove, because yeah. I love how you're talking about these different elements. You did work a job so that you could stay in the energy that you wanted to embody. Mm -hmm. There's so many things where I think we overlook the power of how our manifestations are coming true, even in the seasons that we don't see yeah. it yet. Yeah. And the way you describe this year is really powerful. So I'll let you kind of start wherever you yeah. want to, but take yeah. us back to that season when you're like, I'm going to prove this. Yeah. I want to first share the inspiration behind it. It actually starts at a Tony Robbins event because at that event I heard my intuition just scream at me for the very first time because our intuition is always talking to us, mm -hmm. but we're trained in our society to be left brain and logical yes. and not to listen to that voice. And then I feel like there's certain moments in life where that voice just comes through, like no matter what, whether you consider yourself intuitive or not, it's just like mm -hmm. something you can't ignore. So that was my moment for me where I heard this voice ask me over and over and over again, Catherine, who are you living for? And it started out Oof. super quiet and then it got louder and louder and louder yeah. and louder until it's like, Catherine, who the F are you living for? And I'm like, whoa. So I wrote it down and I was like, this is a really good question. Yeah. So the next day of the event, I come back and I think we're like going through limiting beliefs or something. And I open up my notebook to where we left off from the day before. And it was Catherine, who are you living for? And I answered for the first time ever, the realization hit me. I'm living for everyone but myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to medical school. I am in a relationship that's like two years overdue a breakup. We're and together <laughs> for comfort. And it was a complicated situation. He lived with us and he was very much part of our family. So there's a lot of things that if you look at logically, like you can really understand like, okay, Catherine, mm -hmm. I can see why yeah. you didn't break up earlier. Yeah. And then I really wanted to move back to LA. LA is where I grew up. It was my home. It was, mm -hmm. you know, which is so funny because I live here now. I never imagined in my life to live anywhere else but LA, but you know, things change. And so at that event, I made all these decisions and I mm -hmm. felt insane. Yep. And I remember coming home from, cause I was actually going to this event staying at my grandma's couch while going to this event. Cause I'm like, Hey grandma, there's an event in LA. Can I stay with you? And she's like, of course. So I come back and the next day I'm like, am I insane? Like I'm about to break up with him. I'm about to go home and tell my parents I'm not going to medical school. Like screw these applications. I'm out. And then I got to figure out a plan to move to LA. Like, am I, I felt so crazy. Mm -hmm. It felt so right. But I'm like, am I mm -hmm. insane? So it was in this moment where I, for the first time, in my life spoke out to some higher power because I didn't grow up like religious or anything yeah. or super spiritual. My mom's into like astrology and like things like that, yeah. but it was never like, this is how you pray Catherine sure. or like, this is how you manifest obviously wasn't taught those things. And I, I said, you know, God, 
universe, whoever is out there, can you, can you send me a sign that I'm on the right path? Like, and if I'm on the right path, can you show me 1111? That's like the first thing that yeah. came to mind. And so I went to go grab a glass of water. My best friend texted me that she's here. She's going to pick me up and we're going to talk this through. Cause she was like helping me. <laughs> was this like an intervention or was she on board? No, she, she was, was like, so on board. She's oh, like, I thank that. God. Finally, like miss you. <laughs> yes. We're both going to move back to LA because we both grew up there. And I look at the clock before I leave and it was 11, 11. And what's mm. crazy is that that wasn't the actual time. It was just a broken microwave time. And I was like, all right. So long story short, finally, four months later, I move in with my grandma. I'm living on her couch because I have no money. I'm trying to figure things out, but I feel so crazy because all of a sudden I'm feeling for the first time in my life, like I just cut myself off from all sources of certainty. My parents no longer support me. In fact, they're very mm -hmm. unsupportive of this path. They were doing everything in their power to yeah. like scare me into going back into medical such school. It's like a parent move. It's such a parent right? move. Yeah. And like, I understand the reasons, but yeah. also it caused me a lot of trauma. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we love you now. But. Yeah. And so, and then I was like, okay, now I'm getting this $15 an hour job. Mm -hmm. And I just graduated from with a biology degree, which it's like, I don't really want to do anything in the field of biology. Like, what am I doing here? And then I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. in the fitness industry. I don't want to be in the fitness industry. And my intuition kept telling me like, you're going to build a brand in the manifestation space. Mm -hmm. Like you are going to do, it's going to be a big brand, but I had no idea what that mm -hmm. would look like. Mm -hmm. I had no, idea. there's no concept. It, like I didn't, it's not like I got the whole business plan, you know, downloaded at the, at the same time. Yeah. And so in this one night of confusion, I was scrolling on Instagram looking for inspiration because back then I think all my Instagram yeah. was, and you have to think this is like what, 20, 15. I was going to say it's like early on before early on. the industry was, as we know it now. Yeah. And it was just all inspirational quotes. I think that's mm -hmm. all I followed. And so I'm just looking for something. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And of course, ironically, I stop at a Tony Robbins quote and the quote says, and I'm going to butcher it, but it's like, live as though your prayers have already been answered. And something just lit up within me. It was like, it's such a manifestation concept. And it's like, conceptually, I knew so much about manifestation. Yes, I've proven to myself so many different elements mm -hmm, of it. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, I'm like, that's the freaking key. Mm -hmm. Live as though your prayers have already been answered. Oh, my God. And then I remember just having this like extension of a download being like, what would it look like if I live like literally acted as if my success was already inevitable? Yeah. Like, what would that look like? What would I do differently? And so that night I opened up my journal and I wrote out and I've done this practice before up until this point, but this time I'm like, no, this is serious. This is, we're getting, we're getting down to business here. Yep. So I wrote down exactly what I want my life to look like to, to like, I'm traveling once a month to a new country every month. I have so, you know, this much money. I am married to this guy, which I was dating my husband at the time. I really wanted to marry him. I don't know if he was as interested in me <laughs> at the time, but I was like, this is what he looks that. like. This is, yes. Yeah. So I'm like, this is how many kids I have. Mm -hmm. Like I had, this is where I live. Yes. I had it all scripted out. Mm -hmm. And then my next step was, well, who do I need to become to manifest all that? How do I approach my life, my right. business, just how I'm being no matter what it is mm -hmm. from this place of it's already done, it's already inevitable. And something about it, and I remember like feeling so much fear in that moment of like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And so I had to convince myself it's only for a year, Catherine. I don't know where I came up with this, but I'm like, if I could just do it for one year, I'm 23 years old. Like if I, if it yeah. all flops, like I'm only going to be 24, like I'll figure it out. I still have time. Right. That was really helpful to me as a thought. But also it was like the most helpful thought of all was, well, what's the worst that's going to happen? Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. And then what? You're going to have to move in to your grandma's couch again. Like you already are, Catherine. You're already living your worst case scenario. So mm -hmm. that was like, OK, I got nothing to lose here. We're going to do this. So literally the next day, I just started doing everything that I knew. So I started um, cultivating. I knew my intuition was very powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's like the key to... You always hear like, you know, people use it in business all the time, especially like female run businesses. Like yeah. you hear like, I just got this download. This invention came to me. I asked like, um, I think it was the owner of Spanx. Like she yeah. asked the universe for a billion dollar idea. And here we go. We have a billion dollar idea. Right. Damn. So 
I just like started to remember all of these things that I've heard. Yeah. And so I um, started to meditate. So like getting to the nitty gritty, I started to meditate every morning and every night, just being in silence, just connecting to my higher self, just mm-hmm. connecting to that voice that asked me, Catherine, who are you living for? Mm-hmm. I'm like, obviously that voice knows what she's talking about. So I'm mm-hmm. going to tune in. Then I really got clear on who is that version of me who already has everything that she wants. Like, what is she actually yeah. doing? What is she believing? How is she thinking? What is she putting her attention on? What is she consuming? Mm-hmm. Who is she surrounded by and mm-hmm. with? And who is she friends with? Who is she not friends with? Like I went to the nitty gritty details. And then every single day I would just take a step in that direction. Yeah. And so I knew, for example, one of my biggest fears at the time, biggest fears was going live on Instagram. Oh, and that relatable. was like a brand new feature back then. Yes. And everyone's like, get live on Instagram. You're going to blow up your business. You're going to, you know, gain an audience. <laughs> and I was like, there's no freaking way. But then I kept reminding myself, hold on a second. The version of me who already mm-hmm. has everything she wants. Mm. She has no problem going live on Instagram. So just doing that. I mean, it was a game changer for me because so many people, you know, they think that so much and it's true. A lot of the manifestation work is in what you journal, is in what you do emotionally, is in what you do spiritually, but you have to seal the deal with action and beliefs get rewired. It's like the final step to rewire a belief is to take action as if the belief is true. Mm -hmm. So you can sit there and be like, yes, I'm going to tell myself I believe this, but until you take Mm -hmm. action as if the belief is true, nothing really changes. Mm -hmm. I think science has said that first you change and then your brain changes. Wow. So it's first you take the step, first you take the leap and then your brain rewires to follow and then it becomes a habit and then it becomes easier. Like people say, oh, you know, the first time I did that, I was freaking out. But then the 10th time I did it, it was fine. And now I do it for a living, like no problem. So then I, um, I did these like visualization sessions, very specific, just like walking myself through like an ideal day in my life or just anything specific of like, what do I want my dream client to look like? How Mm -hmm. do I want them to contact me? How am I seeing money flow in? Like opening my bank account, seeing certain amounts of money. I had very specific rituals where I'd go to work my job and I set my background on my desktop as my vision board. So I built a vision board, yep. of course, to match up my Obviously. life. Yeah. And the subconscious mind like uh, responds very well to vision boards mm-hmm. because yeah. it's a very right brain process. You have mm. images, you have symbols, you have feelings all embedded into this. So the subconscious so mind... True which is responsible for 95% of the creation of your reality, obviously responds well to it. I had fake checks that I wrote for like how much I want to create in a single month, put on my wall. Like my boss probably thought I was insane, but he was hitting a couple. They were also like, oh, it's Catherine, you know, because they were actually a family friend. (laughs) So this is another piece of why I'm so grateful to them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you guys, I'm building a business. Like I'm only going to be here for a year. Like I told them I'm going to be here for a year. I'm doing this one year experiment. They were looking for help and I was like, yep. I will help you. I'm yep. very smart. You know, I can have I have yeah. skill set, so I'll help you. And so they were kind of like, okay, Catherine's doing her weird things. <laughs> and then I'd walk in every morning and I would like I learned about how like physiology affects yeah. like the quality of thoughts that yes. you have and the quality of the vibration that you send out. And so I'd put myself in like superwoman pose and I would say my affirmations, like, how does that version of me speak mm-hmm. to herself? What does she mm-hmm. believe to be true? I would say my affirmations out loud whenever someone would ask me like friends and family at the time, which were all like Catherine's crazy, but they'd be like, so how's your business going? And I'm like, it's going, it's going really well. Thank you. Like I would talk the language that mm. I used. I mean, just like the, the language that I use, like I never said the words expensive or I'm broke or I can't afford that. Like I just became very Mm -hmm. specific because Mm -hmm. the version of myself already has everything that she wants. Is she talking about money in that way? Is she talking about business in that way? Is she talking about herself in that way? No. So Mm -hmm. I just like went all in, like taking all this very literally and just almost like acting, which I'm not a great actress, but this is like my best form of acting. I'm just going to the performance of my lifetime, the performance of my life, like my whole life depends on this. Like I really want to build an incredible life and my whole life depends on Mm -hmm. this. So I'm just going to do all these silly looking things. And let me tell you, the moment you get one piece of evidence that comes in, Mm. it's like, okay, this is really interesting. Like the moment that I started noticing my Instagram followers start growing. And I opened up, my intuition told me, 
Catherine, open up a Facebook group Mm -hmm. and just share your teachings in a Facebook group. And Mm -hmm. it was a little counterintuitive because Facebook groups are private, right? That's not how you build an audience. But for whatever reason, the word community kept showing up. And to this day, community is everything to me. That's the legacy I want to leave behind. I never look at Manifestation Babe as it's the Catherine's and Kina show. Mm -hmm. It's really about who is the Manifestation Babe. We all are the Manifestation Babe. So it was really about community. So I started making these videos and going live again, the scariest thing in the world to me. And like one person, I remember maybe like, I maybe posted, Hey, I'm starting a Facebook group. Here's how you can join. So like 10 people joined. Right. So my first time going live, it was just one person watching me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, blah, 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 blah. And like, I had this idea to call it coffee chats because between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. as I'm getting ready for work, I would notice that I was ready for work by 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. And I didn't have to leave until 8 a.m. to hit traffic and get to work by 9 a.m. And so for me, I'm like, what am I doing wasting this hour between 7 and 8 a.m.? I'm just going to do this show in this Facebook Mm -hmm. group called The Coffee Chat. And I'm just going to share like any anything that came to mind, like, hey, Mm -hmm. guys, here's a fun manifesting tip or, hey, guys, here's what I'm currently Mm -hmm. struggling and here's how I'm going to overcome it. Or, hey, guys, I read this book. Let me read this Mm -hmm. passage to you and let it inspire you the way that inspired me. Just like random things that came to mind. And then the next week, it was like two people watching me and then three people watching me and then four people watching me. And over time, it blew up. I think like the last time that I was really active in this group, like actively having my attention on it, I think we grew to like 40 or 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. And so that was like, this started building evidence, like, hold on, mm-hmm. Catherine, this is actually working. This is actually working. And then people would come to me and be like, do you have coaching? Can you coach me? Yeah. And like, Catherine this and Catherine that. And then I started like my podcast and it just like all went from there. And my agreement with my one-year experiment was, well, if it doesn't work, then I'm just going to, then it, then it doesn't work. I'm just going to move back to my grandma's couch. But if it does, I'm going to keep playing the game mm. for the rest of my life. And that's literally what I'm still doing. It's like an extension. And here we are. (laughs) It's so powerful. And I feel like when I hear episodes like these, it's that reminder that the basics are simple. So simple. But because they're so simple, they're easy to stop doing. Yes. Yeah. You have this genius distinction. When I tell you, like, this is the person I go to when I need to drop in and remember, like, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's that's where I need to tweak my mindset. Like you really just have this beautiful, succinct way of teaching principles that could be complicated, but they're mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. And when you talk about the ladder of believability yeah. as a way to stair step your way into these bigger manifestations, that changed my life. Really? Like actually ah. changed my life whenever I learned it. So I want you to just clarify that for us because yes. what I can hear in maybe someone listening to this is, okay, well, that's great, but I can't even stretch my mind to think that mm-hmm. far. And I, I can see I've stopped myself by almost casting the net too far, casting the vision too far where it's so unbelievable to my mind. I check out, yeah. but you have this brilliant way of working with your mind and how it's wired to stair step your way there. Will you talk about that? Yeah, of course. Let me just go back to where I discovered this yeah. and discovered its power, which was I noticed that like every goal I would set on New Year's Eve would be way too ambitious, Mm. way too outlandish. And that's not to say it's not it could never happen, but it's just I noticed like nothing that I've ever put down on my New Year's, not resolution list, not like I'm going to get in shape, but just like what I want to call in, what my Mm -hmm. goals are. Mm -hmm. I would create these goals. And every time it was too many goals, it was crazy numbers like this is the year I become a billionaire, like. I'm, I'm broke. Like, what are we talking about? Grandma's couch. Yeah, like, I'm on I'm grandma's couch. It. Like, what are we doing here? What are we talking about? <laughs> or like, I'm going to have 17 million followers, right? Like just outlandish. And so I thought to myself, what if I just simplified this? And what if I tried something I, again, this was actually within my one year experiment. And so I was just in this vibe of like radical experimentation, Yeah, radical experimentation. Like, let's just try it. Why not? Like, what do we have to lose people? We have nothing to lose. And so I was like, okay, so let me try something different. Let me narrow it to three goals and then let me create something where it's a stretch, but it's not blowing my sockets out. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not Mm -hmm. stressing thinking about accomplishing this in the next 12 months. So with the ladder of believability, it's important to understand that what you're doing here is you're breaking down a goal into smaller chunks 
but you're not forgetting about the big goal. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people make the mistake of thinking like, oh, but the universe is going to forget. The universe never forgets that I actually want this thing. No, it's trust me. The universe is very smart, probably smarter than you. It understands that you want this, but you have to wrap your mind around it because there's an incongruence between what you believe is possible and what is actually possible. And as long as there an, there's an incongruence, it's like the placebo effect, like yeah. what you believe is what will happen. So anyway, I had like this desire to make $500,000 in a year, but the year prior, I only made $9,000. So I'm like, that's a, you know, it just in my business. And I'm like, yeah. that's a little, it's just, it's not that it's impossible. Quantum leaps are very possible, but you have to put yourself in a frequency of open palms. Mm -hmm. So you have to put yourself in the frequency of total relaxation where it's like, ah, that feels good to me. It feels exciting. Yeah. feels exciting, but I'm not like pulling away because I'm like, I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know what, you know, like, so anyway, I decided on setting a goal of a hundred thousand dollars. And for me, it's like, I think I made a total with my business, with that nine to five job, what was remaining from my fitness business. I was like, okay, I think I made like around 40, 45 K this year. So like a hundred feels good because I know that I have something here with manifestation, babe. And mm-hmm. I think I can make a hundred grand happen. I would be life-changing. That would be so exciting. That's six figures. Mm-hmm. I calculated what would that mean on a monthly basis. I'm like, I'm in, I'm so in yeah. on this. So that became like the rung on the ladder, the next rung on the ladder, the next stepping stone. And with that, it wasn't that I was forgetting about my big goal. It's just that I needed to put myself in a frequency of total openness. And so what ended up happening is I, I put my belief behind that. And then I ended the year actually making $600,000, even more than my top rung of the ladder, not because, and people go like, how is that possible? Well, because I kept myself open. I kept mm. myself in a state of anything is possible yeah. because I'm not stressing myself out mm. by setting goals that are way too high for the moment that I'm in my life. This, this period of my life that yeah. I'm in, it's just a little too much. My nervous system is going to blow totally. out. So I got to work with my nervous system, not against my nervous system. And when you work with your nervous system, Oh my God, so much more flows in from Mm -hmm. that space because there's no constriction. There's no restriction. It's total openness. It's total receptivity. And in that place, the universe goes, well, you're open, you're ready to receive. So here you go. Yes. And I, I want to make it even more tangible because that's, that's a big leap. So you went from making 9,000 to 600,000 tangibly, like were you setting those micro goals month to month? Was it growing that way? Or were you just not paying attention month to month and continuing to focus on like this more palatable goal of yeah. 100K? This is such a great question. Yeah. And it was actually both, I would say. I okay. never once, I never thought about the annual goal again yeah. until the end of the year where I was like, oh my God, wait a minute. <laughs> hold on, wait a minute. For me, it was a monthly thing. Okay. And for me, it was the, um, I think the first the first thing that I set for myself was a 5k month. Mm-hmm. Then I hit a 5k month. This is, and I'm glad, so glad you asked this question. Cause it brought me back to like, yes, I did this actually on a month to month basis yeah. because it built even more belief in myself over the process. That makes sense. So I started with 5k mm-hmm. and then the next month I'm like, and then when I hit it, I think it was like the next month I was like, okay, um, let's try 7k. Yeah. 7K and how are you deciding right? what the next stretch was? Just like feeling into my body. Yeah. Yeah, Feeling into my body. Yeah. So anything that kept me relaxed was good. And anything that made me go uh, like just a little bit of a constriction, a little bit of a pull away, a little bit of like, I don't know how that's going to happen. Any sense of like, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. I would lean into that and ask myself, okay, is there a number that would then be a little bit lower, but not too low that we can play around with. And so I would just, I would do these check-ins cool. with how yeah. they feel. Yes. That so then sense. I did 7K and then I hit 7K and I'm like, okay, what's the next number? And so I was like, okay, 11K. And then it was 11K. And then I hit, um, I think my next number is like 15K. And then it just like snowballed from there. And I still mm-hmm. do this process to this mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. I, it, it literally changed my relationship with manifestation. And I think because, and it sounds like you too, I have no problem being a visionary, being a big dreamer. Yeah. But what I didn't realize that that was happening is it was my mind was disconnecting from the possibility. So it didn't feel like it had a plan to get there. Yeah. And hearing it 
through that frame helped me to understand how to work with how this science, this very real science does work, but to do it in a way that it wasn't disconnecting from the big vision. It was helping myself expand into it, which going back to what you said in the beginning, that the secret to manifestation is living as though it's real today. Yeah. It's not as big of a leap right. to be living that. Right. So how does that look now in your manifestation journey? Is it, it just bigger goals and numbers and bigger leaps yeah. that you can embody? Yes. You know, it's, it's really interesting because I feel like I have so much today of yeah. what I once dreamed of. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's very easy to be like, oh, it's not a big deal. But at the same time, when I look back, I there's a specific song that triggers memories of this mm, time in my life. Totally. It's know called what you mean. Feels Like Home. And I forget yeah. the artist. Um, Is it like a slow song? Dun, 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 dun. It's, it's, no, maybe I'm thinking. It has a little bit more. <laughs> thinking of like a romantic movie. song. No, that, no, no, no. A uh, high school crush once played for me in the car. <laughs> not no, that no. song. Got it. Not that song. <laughs> it's more of like a, an ele electronic kind ah, of okay, okay, beat, okay. Yeah. a little bit on the slower side but yes. the lyrics not really the spoke to me and I'm not a lyrics person mm. but at the time I think the lyrics go like I don't know where I am but it feels like home and it's basically mm. this guy saying like I'm gonna pack my bags and like go and leave my old life behind and mm -hmm. just like it's it's all about like risk taking and like not yeah. knowing what you're doing feeling crazy mm -hmm. but for whatever reason it feels like home yeah and so this song really triggered me the other day in a positive way because I was driving through like Scottsdale and Scottsdale was another one of my manifestations that took me a sec to manifest because of the housing market here. And I really had to work with my ladder of believability. And, um, I just like started crying. Cause I'm, I just looked back at my whole journey over the last, you know, mm -hmm. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. And just like in total awe of it, of like mm -hmm. this, this stuff actually works and just, you know, getting like testimonials from people over the years yeah. of like their lives changing and how there's this massive ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people always ask me like, what is it like for you today? And I think for me today, there's definitely, of course, my mind is on bigger things mm -hmm. and, you know, more money, more success, mm -hmm. speaking on bigger stages, attracting more of a following, like doing all these things. But also at the same time, I've created so much spaciousness for just enjoying yeah. what I now have yeah. and not being in such a rush to manifest the next thing and really mm -hmm. taking inventory and appreciation of the manifestations that I have. And also like fine tuning things, too, because I mm -hmm. notice like I'm very ambitious I can work a lot. Like yeah. I love the work that I do, but at the same time, I yeah. want to be a present mom. Yeah. And I've, I'll notice sometimes like the balance has gotten a little out of hand. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh no, mm -hmm. I want to spend more time with my son and I'm spending a little too much time in the, the work zone. And yeah. so manifestation then is about like, okay, the version of you who has everything that she wants in this moment, because that mm -hmm. always changes, your vision always changes. How much time is she actually working? Does, does, mm -hmm. did, did she say yes to this opportunity or maybe this is a maybe mm -hmm. opportunity or it's a no opportunity? And so then I'll make consistent decisions from like, what is mm -hmm. my version of my dream life now? Yeah. And the version of my dream life now is to spend more time with my son and really be a part of his life and not be mm -hmm. so into work that I like forget, mm -hmm. you know, and not like experience motherhood and not experience the first few years of his life. Like I really want to be present. Yeah. So I use these principles to help me fine tune and constantly ask myself, okay, there's a gap here. I'm feeling like I'm veering away from mm -hmm. total alignment. This is what total alignment looks like. So Catherine, what are the steps now? That mm -hmm. version of you who's on this timeline if you're veering away from the desired timeline, like what is a tangible step that you can take? Oh, I see. Okay. I'm going to cancel this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move this thing to later. I want to do it. But if I spread out my calendar over time, then I'm finding more pockets of time to spend with my yeah. son. Or it's like, maybe we add in a vacation in our calendar yeah. and just do a family vacation. Just, you know, my husband, my son and I, and so I'll look at it as like a fine tuning process too. It's not always just like bigger, better future. Mm -hmm. It's also in the now, like what is something that I can tweak Ooh, here? Yeah. In the now. I love that. Yeah. And you very publicly took time off. You took I a did. sabbatical last I did. year. And I know our mutual friend, Lori, was kind of a part of like she the was permission. A <laughs> when she told me that story, I was like, yeah, that's, that's 
just I think what we're all waiting for someone to give us permission for. And yeah. we actually hold that permission. So yeah. talk about the decision to do that and then the lessons that it brought because it's oh been cool God. watching you navigate that. Yeah, it's funny. We all need expanders. And yeah. I think that, yeah. you know, when I say like find evidence in your life. Mm-hmm collect evidence as you go. One of sometimes we really don't have evidence. And so it's looking into other people who else has accomplished this because there's a spiritual law called the law of oneness. And it states that what's possible for one is possible for all. And so I really lean into that when I see someone who has what I want, I see that as proof that it's possible for me too. And if I don't see evidence of it in my life, I look at evidence in their life and just borrow that evidence for myself. Like if it's possible for her then it's also possible for me. So, um, it's funny with, with Lori, we were supposed to do a podcast and this, like, I swear it's like this weird karmic thing between the three of us. It's like reschedule, reschedule, Uh reschedule. So I was supposed to do a podcast episode and I don't, I think I wasn't feeling well that day because I just burned myself out completely. Mm -hmm. It was at the end of traveling for six months straight with a baby ask me why I thought this was a great idea. I've always had this dream of like doing a digital nomad life and thinking like, we're just going to pop into this country and then that country and just like live our life. But we also had my mom in tow as our nanny. She was helping out. And then also our son who wasn't sleeping at all. He didn't start sleeping until he was like eight or nine months old. And by this point we were traveling when he was between five and 10 months old. Mm -hmm. So after taking my mom on her dream trip to Italy, which was so much fun, Mm -hmm. Then we had like plans for more and I was like, cancel it all. I cannot go. Like if I pack one more suitcase, I'm going to scream because it's this like pack, unpack, pack, unpack, pack, unpack game that I just can't do anymore. And I need stability. I need an office. I just totally feel that like, like I'm finding that I have very Libra qualities, Mm -hmm. which I am a Libra. Mm -hmm. And so I need that balance where I have my home base and I have my travel and I have my office and like, I just have my things that keep me in balance. So I'm like burnt out. I'm pretty sure this is a day I wasn't feeling well. And I texted my assistant and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Can you ask Lori if she can reschedule for the next week? And her response was, Lori's actually taking the summer off. And so she won't be able to do it until after the summer. And I was like, oh, dang it. Well, I also don't want to show up in this energy anyway. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. screw it. It's not meant to happen right now. So let's just reschedule it later. And I, I literally put my phone down and I heard that same voice that asked me really good questions like Catherine, who are you living for? Yeah. The voice of my yeah. soul and intuition say, oh, and you're going to take a summer off too. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Like I have three launches. I have all this stuff going on. I'm supposed to build like the money program that I have mm-hmm. right now. I was supposed to build it then. Like I had plans to build it back in like April of last year. And I was like, no, I'm not. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, this sounds really good. Like it sounds like a secret desire. And could I? Yeah. And like I teach this concept of secret desires where we have these secret desires that if we don't Mm. act on them, the universe will force us to act on them and it won't always be in the way that we want them to be acted upon. Mm. Meaning like if you have this desire, the secret desire to like take a week off of work and just rest because you're so craving it and you don't listen to that, this is usually when people get sick or they break a leg or something happens where the universe puts them in bed. Be like, you need to listen. Sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. You need to really (laughs) like listen and pay attention to what's authentic to you. Mm -hmm. Like, what are your authentic desires? And so I've always had this since the beginning of my business. I've always Mm -hmm. wanted to build it to a degree Mm -hmm. where I can take summers off if I want to. And so it was almost like the universe is like, now's your chance. Mm -hmm. Kevin, now's your chance. And so I'm like, yeah, it does sound really good. And also, I don't really want to find out what would happen if I didn't act on this. So I'm going to have to. It sounds really scary. Yeah. I talked to one of our good friends, Natalie, yeah. Natalie Ellis. Yeah. Um, I'm in her mastermind and I like presented this idea to the mastermind. And Natalie is the first one who's like, I think you really should. I think you should. I think this is a great best yeah. idea you've ever come up with, yeah. Catherine. I think you're going to find a lot of inspiration on the other side. You're going to mm-hmm. really like rest and rejuvenate and come back with more, more of your power. Mm-hmm. Like you're really going to call your power back in this moment. And also, like, I know you, Catherine, and you've been sharing, like, your desires to, you know, find the balance between motherhood and business. Like, now's your opportunity to go all in on motherhood and just be with it for a season. So the next day, I made this plan. I actually texted my COO, Londa, and I was like, 
emergency exec meeting tomorrow. Is it possible to make it happen at whatever time? And at the time we all lived in Vegas. So, and so did she. So we literally went to her house the next day and I was so terrified to bring this mm. up because it meant like figuring out what to do. What, what are we going to get the team to do for the next three months? We have all these launches. What is it going to look like to not have Catherine's face or involvement or organic, like her yeah. organic self promoting? Because no... that's a lot of like what has driven your business. Is exactly. You showing up. So this isn't like a business that wasn't reliant no, on you. Let's no. just make sure people are clear. Yeah. Very, very like Catherine's the face of the business. Catherine's the driving force mm -hmm. here. So I came over and I said, hey, um, I'm feeling called to take like, and I didn't give a specific time. I was just like the summer off, like four months, five months, three months. I don't know how long, but mm -hmm. I'm feeling burnt out. And can you guys just figure out financially how to make it happen? Like just mm -hmm. figure out a way to drive revenue in the business without me. Mm -hmm. And I thought for a fact, like Londo was going to look at me like, are you effing kidding me? And she literally just said, okay, hold on one moment. She gets up. She grabs her passion planner because this girl doesn't do anything digital. It has Love to be her. in her passion planner. So she grabs her <laughs> passion planner. She opens it and she's like, what months were you thinking? And starts like, and I'm like, I don't know, August, September, October. And she's like, okay, no problem. All right. Got it. Okay. I'll, we'll figure it out. And the wave of relief, wow. like I feel like 27 elephants just got lifted off my chest. Like who picked those up? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> this is the best thing ever. Wow. I went home and I, the next day I was like, I don't have work to do. I have nothing to do. And the fact, I just actually want to acknowledge too, how quickly you listened to that voice and took action. Yeah. Because That's, I know the consequences. That's the yes. thing. It's going to get louder. Like it's a genuine desire. It's a mm -hmm. secret desire. It's going to get louder. It's going to get messier. And I'm like, I'm going to nip that in the bud right now. I'm going to listen. Yeah. I think it's because I have so much evidence over yeah. my life of just how, um, how many rewards have come out of listening to that voice right. that there's no way in hell I was not going right. to listen to it because right. I've been so rewarded mm. up until that point. So anyway, ended up being four months. Mm -hmm. My team, um, did an affiliate launch, which we do every single year. Yep. And it's pretty much like in the bag, like we know what to do. Like, uh, we had so much content for it. So it was very like just simple to implement. So I'm like, okay, we can start there. My team won first place as affiliates. Like, uh, I told, I, it was, um, James. my friend James. Yeah. Ledmore. Yeah. yeah. I, I told him, I'm friend. like, Hey, just so you know, um, I'm probably not going to be <laughs> super involved in this launch this yeah. year. It's probably going to be just a couple emails. And my team was like, no, we're taking first place. So they went all in, had the biggest launch that we've ever had with BBD, Business by Design, his program. Wow. And then we did our first evergreen launch without me of MBA, wow. which was like, I don't know what's going to happen. They ended up doing seven figures with that. It's like everyone just stood in their power. Like it gave mm -hmm. everyone an opportunity to then show up for me because I spend so much time and energy showing up for everyone else. Mm -hmm. It really showed to me how important it is for us to just receive support mm. and just not have to be so like strong all the time and so independent yeah. and so like you know everything relies on me because there yeah. are there are people out there there are forces out there there mm -hmm. are guides and beings and angels there's so, there's a huge squad that we all have that mm -hmm. we just don't see mm -hmm. aside from you know the people our support right. teams the, that the visible and us. invisible the squad the visible and the invisible yeah. spirit squad they want to help us. Mm -hmm. And if we stand in the way and we refuse to let them help us, we mm -hmm. deny them the gift of mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. And all of us feel good when we serve. All of us feel good mm -hmm. when we give. Why would we deny that? And so it taught me so many incredible lessons. First of all, I learned from that experience that I don't want to be a full-time mom. I definitely do love work. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. that was great confirmation. Second of all, I felt like I got maternity leave part two that I so badly sure. needed. Yeah. I got so much energy and so much creativity back. I came back. Like with a vengeance. With a vengeance. I felt it. Oh my yes. God. So many programs that I created in the last four months. I'm like, where are these coming from? It's like my team would be like, Catherine, you haven't created because I spent so much energy on my one like manifestation yeah. babe academy yes. for so long mm -hmm. that I haven't created any like micro things mm -hmm. to create any sort of funnel or anything like or just right, offer anything right. else outside of the $3,000 range that yeah. isn't like from 2017. Right. And so they're like, Catherine, they're trying to encourage me. And I'm like, you guys don't understand. Like nothing's inspiring me about that. 
And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, we can create this masterclass and that masterclass and this mini program and that mini program. And then it evolved into like, okay, I'm ready to create like a bigger program now, but it's just so much genuine Mm -hmm. energy that I have. And I don't have to come from a place of exhaustion Mm -hmm. or tiredness Mm -hmm. or that again, scarcity frequency that I talked about way back when I never wanted to put that energy into my business. Mm -hmm. So it was a matter of like, it was it's always putting importance on like being at my highest frequency Mm -hmm. when I deliver my goods. Yeah. And the, the actual value being in that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the audience listening to this, our ambitious women, your audience, ambitious people, it's so counterintuitive to that part of us that's finding identity and purpose in the doing mm-hmm. to consider that there might be more available on the other side of yeah. not doing for a season. Yeah. And but being. That ties so clearly to what actually creates these manifestations that we want is that razor's edge beh- between doing and receiving, mm-hmm. intending and surrendering. Mm-hmm. And something that I, I really love that you've talked about this dynamic too between you and Brennan, your husband, is as someone who is very much like you're a powerhouse, you are the breadwinner, you've created this beautiful business. I love when you actually talk about part of the lessons of this season being learning how to also receive in your relationship. Yeah. And I'm sure that's changed too as bec- as you've become a mother. Will you just talk a little bit about that and some of the some of the shifts, because I even feel it in your energy, oh, wow. just really like relaxing into that receiving mode. Yeah. So let me give some context. When yeah. I gave birth to my son, Orion, Brennan and I went through a shit storm in our relationship. It just turned everything on its head. And it was through a process of figuring out, OK, what are we going to do? Are there events that can help us because of course I'm yes. going right into what is a self-development here. Let me solve this. Yes. Let me solve, solve this. Yeah. Self-development. This yes. my yeah. way out of this. Exactly. Totally. And so I went into like, okay, there's like relationship coaches, mm-hmm. relationship therapists, like all kinds of people. And what I came across that helped us the most was the feminine and masculine dynamics. Mm-hmm. So like Mel Wells's work, I'm in her mastermind. Love her. John Wineland, incredible, yeah. incredible work. Brennan's actually in his mastermind now. Allison Armstrong talks a lot about the differences mm-hmm. between the male brain and the female brain and how we're different, how we can coexist. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it was so impactful for me. And I've learned from this year of like going all in, kind of like the one year experiment of relationships. Mm-hmm. That in order for me to be my happiest in my relationship, I have to be in my feminine, which means Mm -hmm. I have to put trust in him, Mm -hmm. surrender to his leadership, understand that he knows what's going on. He has within him this drive, this innate masculine drive to protect and provide for the Mm -hmm. family. And if I stand in the way of that, then he won't be able to really embody that. For me to encourage him to really stand in his masculine pole, I need to fully go into my feminine pole. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think that was the beauty of the the sabbatical for me is because I really went deep into my feminine pole. I think our relationship was just skyrocketed in how incredible it was in that moment because I gave myself such a deep understanding of like, okay, I am here to be to nurture, Mm -hmm. to nourish, to receive. And by me receiving and trusting that his leadership is never going to, he's never going to like, yes, he might make the wrong decision every now and then because we're human beings, but he has this innate desire to protect and provide. And what would it look like for me to really like receive that? And so I just created this kind of separation between my relationship and like money and, and my business, meaning that Of course, I'm going to be the leader of my business. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm the breadwinner. So of course, there is this element of, you know, everyone has both feminine and masculine energy. So of course, I'm going to embody my masculine in certain Mm -hmm. areas Mm -hmm. of my business. But aside from that, how can I be fully in my feminine, in my relationship? And it comes from receiving, comes from being an incredible receiver. So it starts from And it doesn't just have to pertain to your relationship. Mm -hmm. It could be just accepting compliments. Right. How often do you accept a compliment? Right. When a stranger wants to open the door for you, how like do you accept that? Yeah. If someone wants to buy you a coffee at a coffee shop or give you something like 
Are you a good receiver of that Mm -hmm. in your relationship? Like let him open the door for you. Let him order for you at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite thing in the world. I'm like, Brennan, I don't want to make decisions. Yes. I I don't want to make any decision outside of business Mm -hmm. and actually finances. This is another dynamic that was really interesting for us. I used to be the sole, like, I'm going to make the money and then I'm going to manage the money. Yeah. And then I realized like, I'm really good at manifesting money, but I don't, if I, if I check one more transaction and see if it matches to what I bought yesterday, I'm going to go crazy. (laughs) It's not making me happy. And it shuts off the power of you magnetizing more. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I put, I asked Brendan like, Hey, do you want to take responsibility for this? And of course he was like, I've been dying to take responsibility Mm -hmm. for that. So it's like, I'm the money manifester. He's the money manager and grower. So he really took over investments and really took over just like paying bills, Mm -hmm. like let him pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Even if you are the breadwinner and it's technically like you're making the money, let him take out the credit card and pay for things when you're Mm -hmm. at a store or at a restaurant or pay the bills or worry about the electricity and the power and the this and the that. And it's like stuff that I don't even think about nowadays. Let him take the car to the dealership when it needs to get fixed and things like that. And just be mm-hmm. really receptive to that. Yes. And as you receive, he actually receives yes. because for him, the greatest thing is to see you happy and to mm-hmm. smile and not to have a burden on your shoulders. Yeah. And so when the masculine like really feels like you're relaxed, you're, you're in your feminine, you're, mm-hmm. you get to be because of their services then that is what makes the masculine the most Mm -hmm. happy. And so they're happy to support and happy to provide. And it was Mm -hmm. really interesting because through this experiment, Brennan actually started a business that already generates like six figures. It's just like I allowed him to be who he really is as I am who I really am. And of course, and then and then another layer to this, I had this download where I was like, hold on a second. Why are so many women nowadays the breadwinners? Why are so many women nowadays like powerful CEOs. Why are so many women nowadays creating such huge businesses and influxes of money? Hold on a second. There's something to this. Wait a second. Oh my God. Money and the universe is masculine. And we are in our feminine receiving through that polarity, Mm -hmm. that attraction. We are attracting the money into our lives. We are being provided for. Yeah. We are being protected through security. Like all of this stuff we are an energetic match to by being in our feminine, like, oh my God, this is making so much sense. And then I was like, hold on a second. I want to use this as like a fun tool for myself where I then started asking myself, what would it look like to live a life where I thought I believed that God source universe was my sugar daddy, was my sexy life partner that just wanted to provide for me. Mm -hmm. And that my only job was just to get out of the way and receive. Mm -hmm. And so that allowed me to really like relax in my manifestation process and get even more excited about how the how is not my job. Mm -hmm. Like literally the how is not my job. I'm not going to know how it's going to happen. I'm not going to know the details of how it's going to unfold. Right. But I just get to look forward to receiving. It's kind of like vacation anticipation. When you have a vacation booked, it's like, have you noticed the week prior? You're, you're in such a good mood. You're like so excited. Yeah. You're getting, you're (laughs) getting getting ready. ready. You're in anticipation. Nothing can go wrong. Any sort of deep, any sort of challenge or obstacle that pops up, you're like, ah, it's okay. I'm going on vacation. Like I'll be in Bora Bora next week. Who cares? Right. Like you're just in a different vibe. Yeah. You're in a different frequency. And I think that that's the missing link for people is mm-hmm. they forget that like literally the stuff that you desire is guaranteed. The only thing mm-hmm. is you might not know when it's going to happen, how it's yeah. going to happen, who's going to make it happen. All of these details, they're not your job, but they yeah. will happen. So how can you live your life in anticipation of them coming? Mm. And that's the difference maker right there. I mean, that context switch, especially for those of us who are not just we're ambitious, but I, like you said, I love my work. So I yeah. can default to the mode of making things happen, which is yeah. cutting me off from receiving. Yeah. But I want to hone in on one final piece of this. This is so good. First of all, this is like a masterclass on manifestation. <laughs> I already can't wait to listen to this back. The part about and you referenced your Scottsdale house. What about when a manifestation is taking way longer yes. than you expected? Oh my gosh. What's the process? Yeah. Two things I like to look at, which is there might be a feared loss involved mm-hmm. or there might be a mm-hmm. hidden benefit in where you currently are. Mm-hmm. So meaning that this is all happening unconsciously. 
Okay. So I didn't know this because obviously it's unconscious, but I had this insane fear that I don't know where it came from that if I live in a home, someone's going to break in and kill me. And I felt safer living in apartments and high rises or staying in hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I always felt on edge renting Airbnbs. Like I didn't know why. And I, and it wasn't until I rented an Airbnb that was in a fine area, totally fine. Like nothing wrong with it, but for whatever reason, I could not fall asleep. Mm. And I was just until five in the morning, I could not fall asleep. And I have a baby who's about to wake up at five and then I'm going to start my day. So that's fun. So that's fun. And I did that four nights in a row and I'm like, I can't sleep. And it wasn't until... I rented a hotel room in Beverly Hills because I was like, get me out of this Airbnb that I, my nervous system finally relaxed. And I was Whoa. like, hold on a second. What is the belief that's contributing to this? Where is this coming from? So of course I dove into my, all, all the different modalities that I know, mm-hmm. my coaches, whatever, to help me uncover mm-hmm. this fear and just un, yeah. uncouple it from the manifestation. And so I realized that I was, I was creating this like hidden benefit to not manifesting the home because it means mm-hmm nothing bad is going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. And then the feared loss is a feared loss of my life if I have it. Which is pretty major. Like that's pretty major. to survival is like the ultimate threat to the nervous system. Exactly, exactly. And like how else this can show up is like people who are having difficulties manifesting more money or manifesting more clients Mm -hmm. into their business. And it's like asking themselves like, what about right now is so comfortable? What about Mm -hmm. right now is so good Mm -hmm. that you're not, you're afraid to like give up? And what about getting there? Are you afraid of, is there like a responsibility that you think yeah. you're going to have to take on? Do you feel like someone's going to leave you? Do you feel like you're going to lose someone? You're going to lose something. There's, there's some, like, that's where you really need to dive in and ask yeah. yourself because those are the hidden blocks that once you uncover it, yeah. even if it's just simply awareness, I can't tell you how many things that I have transformed just yeah. by becoming aware of them, let alone actually rewiring them. And once you discover that and you're like, huh, okay, let me question this because that's how we get rid of beliefs is we question Mm -hmm. them. We poke holes at them. We show ourselves that it's a lie. We collect evidence, you know, asking the right questions to create the right evidence that this is all a lie. This is made up. It's not the truth. And then of course it loosens itself out of your subconscious Mm -hmm. mind. And then you can replace it with a new belief Mm -hmm. that then you gather enough evidence for, and then you create a new Mm -hmm. neural network and then you take action on that. So that's kind of like a short form of how you just real quick just real quick just real several quick months of, yeah right yeah, yeah but that's the actual work of manifestation exactly it's not just the vision board or just it's actually creating those visions so that you can trigger where you currently yes. don't believe that fears. It, and then you go to work yeah to unpack that fears limiting beliefs all those things will usually mm-hmm. come up when you set your intentions when you make yes. the vision board it's like, why don't I believe that this is possible for me and just see what mm-hmm. comes out of that? Or like, who do I think I'm going to have to lose? Or what do, mm. what do I think I'm going to have to give up yeah. to get there? And then it's like working on those things that create like this clear pathway to yeah. your desires. Yeah. This was delicious. <laughs> I love that word. It really <laughs> was. I can't wait for part two. We're just going to like create that right now. Where yes. can people find? So you have an amazing podcast and also your programs really are some of the most value packed programs. If you loved this conversation, I just joined the new money program. You did. I, I haven't actually you. listened yet. <laughs> I know. I'm like, but this is actually the year of even learning from the wisdom that's around me in my peer group, these little nuances of the things that I'm like, I'm good at that, but I want to get even better. So yeah. where can people find you, your programs? And then the podcast, of course, is one of my favorite resources. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I was so excited when I saw your name pop up. I'm like, oh my God, it's Lindsay. Listen, we're doing this this year. Okay. Yes. And listen to the dripping in money meditation as soon as possible. I know I can't wait. Like it's, it's it's a good one if I shall say so myself. You can find me on Instagram at Manifestation Babe. All of my offerings and courses and freebies and all the good stuff you can obviously find in my Instagram bio, but you'll find a lot more at Mm manifestationbabe.com. And then my podcasts, wherever podcasts play, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, I think those are like the two main platforms. It's called the Manifestation Babe Podcast. Just easy. We'll make it easy. We're going to keep it real easy. Of course, for you. Um, I want to end with this question, and this is such a beautiful invitation to open yourself up for more receiving because it's an opportunity to acknowledge yourself. Oh my gosh. For something that you've done, something you've achieved. It could be the smallest thing, but when you think back, we just call it a powerhouse moment and it's anything big or small that maybe you overlooked it in the moment and you didn't really celebrate it or say like, 
I'm like so proud of how I showed up in that moment. So if I say, what's a recent powerhouse moment that you want to celebrate? What's the first one that pops into your mind? Oh my gosh. This is such, I mean, if you want to stump people, like this is the question to ask, like, good job. <laughs> it's, I mean, and it actually, it's so beautiful because <laughs> it's a reminder that all of us who are out there need kicking more ass, self-acknowledgement. that's often the hardest question for me and everyone else to answer. So those of you listening at home also don't think you're getting off easy. You also need to answer this question right now. Okay. The, the first thing I can think of is, um, over the holidays, my husband and I felt really called to um, help um, some families. Mm -hmm. So we put out this form on social media. And of course, I wish I could help everybody. Yeah. And I think this is the cool thing about money that people often forget mm -hmm. is it's not just about money. It's like money is an amplifier. Mm -hmm. Money is an expander. Money makes you more of who you already are. So the more that, the, that you have, the more you can do really cool stuff with it. And one of my things is like, I've always told this joke, like, I'm not really great, like uh, great at like volunteering my time, but I will mm. fund so many people, so many projects. Like I really love to write yes. the checks that move the needle forward. Thank yeah. you. That's the, yeah. that's the phrase I'm looking for. So yeah. there are many moments in my life where I was like, you know, top donor, like a ho mm -hmm. homeless organization. But the one that were the ones that were most meaningful to me were over this, uh, winter, this holiday season, I put out a form, like if anyone needs help or anything. And it was all these moms mm. that just left. Like this has my heart because my mom left a domestic, um, violence situation, yeah. um, when I was like seven years old, which I wasn't aware of the extent of how much mm. violence there was. And now it's like, as I'm healing my nervous system, I'm like, Oh, that's why certain things have come mm -hmm. up for me. And so there's all these like moms that, um, we're like looking for, you know, um, funds to help buy Christmas presents for their kids. And they were saying like, you know, I just left their abusive dad. We yeah. just moved into an apartment, like any help that could be helpful. And just the ability to be able to do that and to choose 20 families and like completely change their Christmas around. It's like, I want to do more of that. Like yeah. more of that, please. Yeah. Thank yeah. you more, please. Yes. To thank the you more, please. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Thank you. This is so much fun. I know my cheeks hurt. <laughs>